Good morning. This is the Blaine Terrell Podcast that can be found each week on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. You can also listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And you can also get uh, information about our show and past shows at our website, www.blainesworld.net. I'm your host, Blaine Greenfield, and I'm here in my Zoom studio in lovely downtown Fairview, North Carolina. Each week, we focus on positive news and information about people and organizations in both Western North Carolina and throughout the country. And, to the, and then it's my pleasure to introduce Sean Simmons with Movement for Life Physical Therapy here in Western North Carolina. And Sean, you can feel free to wave to all your fans and friends who are watching this. Okay, that, that is Sean. <laughs> and Sean, I'm not going to put you on the spot and ask you to play guitar in the back, so you don't have to sing today. I know, I know I you're disappointed. Your Sean, listeners will appreciate that. Okay, same thing. I won't sing either. But Sean Simmons graduated with a doctorate in physical therapy in 2010 and became a board-certified orthopedic clinical specialist in 2014. He opened Movement for Life Physical Therapy in South Asheville in 2015. He's been the head physical therapist for Asheville City Soccer Club since inception in 2017. And the question, uh, Sean, I always ask the first time when somebody's on the podcast is in terms of as a child, you grew up where? Uh, my dad was in the army, so I grew up somewhere for two years and then <laughs> somewhere else. So, uh, all over the, all over the country. So. How many homes did you live in? Uh, a bunch. A bunch. <laughs> a bunch. More, more than my mom wanted to live in, I, I think. <laughs> did you ever settle down somewhere? Um, so when my dad separated from the army, we moved, uh, or they moved to Virginia, um, a few months after I started going to school at James Madison. Um, and so they've been kind of in Virginia ever since um, until relatively recently. Now they're actually here in Black Mountain. So, Oh, very nice. Now, it's actually been the longest I've ever been in one place. So as a child growing up then all over the country, eventually in the Virginia area, did you always know you want to be a physical therapist? Oh, God, no. Um, Aside that, from that, a rock star. No, yeah, that was, that was the first goal, but... <laughs> Um, no, that was more a uh, process of elimination, actually. I uh, didn't really know what I wanted to do and started shadowing some people and um, really wanted the, act the active lifestyle part of it. And uh, my dad's a neurosurgeon, so um, really liked all the health and wellness and anatomy and all that kind of stuff. And I um, was fortunate enough to shadow a couple PTs and go, wow, that's a pretty fun way to blend all of those interests. And uh then I went to undergrad and it just kind of took off from there. We It was definitely what I wanted to do. And fortunately, very fortunately, still is after all that school, <laughs> everything else. <laughs> now, you're mentioning some really good advice if anybody's listened to this. And you mentioned the idea of shadowing somebody. And what did okay. that entail? Uh, well, anyone that I could get my hands on, really, that would let me follow them around for the day and see what they were going to do. Um, you know, I, I shadowed a couple of people that uh, worked in, you know, cubbies and cubicles and small offices. And um, honestly, that would that, that was a living nightmare for me, even for the day or two that I did it. Um, so fortunately, I, I um, realized that early on. And um, so I, I just followed anybody that would let me um, just to see if anything piqued my interest or um, had me engaged at all. And um, fortunately I was able to follow enough people around to get a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do. And, um, and just went from there. Were some of these folks physical therapists? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I shadowed a few people, um, really, really didn't like what they did, uh, or didn't, didn't see myself, myself doing all that stuff. Um, and then I liked, uh, shadowing some physicians, but, um, wasn't exactly what I wanted to do or what I saw myself doing. And so my parents were like, oh, you know, you should go shadow a physical therapist. That's kind of down the right road. My mom was an occupational therapist and she goes, maybe you'll, maybe you'll like that side of things. And so I, I shadowed, I think two different physical therapists, two or three. Um, and each time I went in, um, I mean, they were happy. They, patients were happy. Uh, everyone just seemed happy and they were combining all of my interests all in one neat little package. And I thought, yeah, this is this is something I can do. Well, now, um, it's a bit of advice for anybody who might be watching or listening to this. Um, do you ever take people who want to shadow with you or they ask to spend some time with you? Do you let them? Oh, yeah, all the time. 
And so how does somebody go about doing that? Just give a call or yeah. contact yeah, they somebody? Can call the office or shoot me an email. Um, we have one little privacy form that they need to fill out. But other than that, it's it's as simple as that. We love having volunteers and students and um, we love talking about our profession and um, the great things that we can do as physical therapists. And um, it's it's great having people that are interested in the profession, even if you know they don't end up doing it. It's it's nice to talk to people about it. Now you alluded to it, but I have to give a compliment that when I went to mis- movement for life physical therapy for some some work there, uh, I was very impressed with what you said that people were actually smiling and laughing and. And sort of almost having a good time, you know, not only yeah. not only you guys, but your staff and the people you were helping, which is kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah, no, I mean, that's that's one of the things that um, grabbed me for, for physical therapy, because, you know, um, one of the big complaints about the medical field right now is that they don't have enough time to be with people. Now, you know, the doctors don't like that either. They get uh, abused and blamed a lot because they only spend a few minutes with people. But you know, unfortunately, that's more the system than their preference. And so physical therapists are lucky because in general, we get to have a lot more time with patients. So I, you know, I can have 40 plus minutes with a patient and it gives us a lot of time to actually get to know them as people and understand what their goals are. And, you know, you spend that much time with people a couple times a week for, you know, however many weeks it is. And um, <laughs> hopefully there's going to be some laughter and some fun and, um, you know, you become friends with people and, you um, help them achieve their goals and stuff. And hopefully that's fun. I mean, hopefully that's fun for everybody, um, patients and staff included. Um, but yeah, I like I like the chatty atmosphere and the um, people goofing off and stuff like that. I think it makes people happy. It's, you know, you well, don't want to go in there and doom and gloom, right? <laughs> well, it's kind of nice too, because it seems that your staff really knows people come in and, and they actually become almost like friends with them, it seems like, yeah. which is, is really kind of cool. <laughs> you mentioned this, John. So to explain it to other people, you mentioned your mom was an occupational therapist. The difference between physical therapist and occupational therapist? Yeah, so the there used to be this line where you know the occupational therapist did the arms and PT did everything else, and that delineation is uh, quite a bit different now. Um, I think when when I describe it, the occupational therapist will do a lot more activities of daily living type things. Um, so they teach people how to care for themselves, how to get dressed, um, uh, make meals, put stuff away, do chores, that kind of thing. Um, they have a lot of adaptive equipment and um, stuff like that that helps people get through a normal day. Um, physical therapists are teaching people to move better. Um, so teaching people how to walk better, how to get up and down out of chairs, um, build strength, range of motion, that type of thing. Um, so I, I think that's probably the, the biggest delineation. There's there's a lot of overlap, um, much like most things in healthcare. But I mean, that's probably the the main difference, I'd say. Because I remember when my dad had to see an occupational therapist, uh, they actually had a car in the facility. Uh-huh. You know? So your point yeah, yeah. was he had to get in and out of the car. I never saw a car in your place. I haven't no, seen, <laughs> no seen hopefully there's not a car in my office. We'll talk a little bit about then your office, John. It's very impressive. First of all, if you tell folks where it is, and then we'll talk about what takes place there. But where is the office? Yeah, so I work in the office on in South Asheville, and that's on Hendersonville Road, just by like Five Guys and Cantina Louis and Publix. Um, we're just tucked away in the old Gerber Village um, section there in the old the old brick buildings. It's a really cool facility. I mean, just to walk in, yeah, I think people would be impressed. But talk about then who should, who do you see as a physical therapist? Who comes into your place? Yeah. So um, I think that's probably something that's different uh, than probably what a lot of people think or have thought in the past. Um, a lot of people think of it as only when you've had surgery and you're recovering from surgery. And uh, realistically, we, we see anybody that wants to move better. Um, and that doesn't even mean that they need to be in pain. Um, you know, we have people that want to get up and down off the ground easier to play with their grandkids, uh, which is one of my favorites because that what a great goal that is. Um, we and have by people... way, can, can somebody volunteer to drop their grandkid off for a couple of hours and then <laughs> yeah. we'll take volunteer. Grandkids? We right. haven't started we haven't started the rent a grandkid program yet, but <laughs> I don't think it's a bad idea. We'll talk about that later. Okay. But but no, so then we also have people that um you know, I, I have a couple of people that just ran the Boston Marathon today. 
Um, and they were having, two of them were having a little bit of pain here and there, and we're getting over that. Um, and then some people were honestly just looking to improve their times and looking how to get stronger and move better. And um, physical therapists do a lot of that as well. Um, I actually do VO2 max testing in my office. Um, Which is what? It, it, so it it's a test that we do with a, a mask on and um, it's trying to measure how much oxygen your body is actually capable of taking in and using. Um, it's a really good performance indicator. Most like elite athletes will do it um, or have done it once, twice, dozen times in their career, depending on how far they go. Um, but we're in this kind of post COVID era, if you want to call it that have also done a lot of testing on people that have had COVID um, and are trying to see if they, you know, if they're back up to where they normally were or not. Um, so lots of different things that we do. We still, we still see all your classic post-operative patients. We see uh, lots of rotator cuff repairs and total uh, knee replacements and hip replacements and things like that. Um, but we also see a lot of people that just have pain or just want to move better. Um, and we have a lot of hikers as well. So just teaching them um, some strength training to get up the hills better because we have some big hills around here. If someone wants to get come into your facility, do they need a referral? No. Um, and that we, I don't think we get asked that enough. Um, so that's one of the really nice things about being in North Carolina is that we have full, it's called full direct access, uh, which basically means people can come in um, just off the street. They can call us up and say, Hey, my knees bother me. Can I come in and see you? Um, your insurance still covers it exactly the same as they would had the physician send you. Um, uh, it's just really nice. It also doesn't mean that we don't talk to your physician. Um, it's a healthcare team, so um, we have a lot of communication with the doctor still, um, just you know, working together to make the person better. But yeah, you can just call the office and come on in. Talk about folks who would call the office, and, and the one thing that comes to mind, Sean, is an area that I'm concerned with. As folks get older, they're concerned with um, the issue of like balance. Can you help yeah. people with their balance? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so they, they've shown your balance is just like strength. If you challenge the system, it'll get better. Um, so we see a lot of people for issues with balance and, uh, it's a really good reason to come into physical therapy. Um, there, there's a lot of people that fall as they get older. And, um, you know, if you just want to look at it from a dollars and cents standpoint, you know, you go to the ER have an MRI, you yeah. have any of that stuff, and it's tens of thousands of dollars. Um, you can come to physical therapy the rest of your life for that that okay. amount of money. Um, but also, you know, from a preventative standpoint, you know, it makes a whole lot more sense to learn some balance exercises you can do every day, build up a little strength, and you know, dramatically decrease your risk of falling. Um, and that's that's a great reason to come into physical therapy. And does that really work? Can you can you learn how not to fall or improve? Oh, yeah. your Absolutely. Um, you know, there's, there's obviously always things that, um, cause people to fall and those, you know, it's not a foolproof method. You don't want to pretend like that's how it is, but, um, you can dramatically reduce your risk. Absolutely. There are countless studies looking at that, um, looking at balance training combined with strength training. And, um, it really can make a big difference. Um, Montana, one of the physical therapists in my office is a board certified geriatric clinical specialist and one of like 1% in the whole country. Um, and she deals a lot with that and has just out, outstanding success with those patients. They, I mean, they have to work hard, you, you know, there's no way to take it easy and, you know, not put any effort in and then hope to get all these results. Um, it's just like strength training. The more you put in, the better you can be. If you work with Montana or anybody else there, do they then get exercise that they can do when they leave the place? Oh yeah, yeah. We we are very um, proactive on the exercise standpoint. Um, it might not be everyone's favorite thing to do to to exercise a lot, but um, exercise is the, the CDC director. Multiple CDC directors have called exercise the that miracle cure, the miracle drug. Um, if we had any drug that provided the same results that exercise did, everyone in the world would be taking it. Um, so the everyone gets exercise. Um, and, and again, for good reason, it doesn't mean we don't do the other stuff. There's a lot of hands-on things that we do, but um, the exercise is the medicine that we prescribe um, to everybody that comes through the door. One thing I've read lately, and it's, I think becoming more popular, they, they, they tell people to stand on one leg or how long you can stand on one leg is an indication of 
What is that an indication of? Yeah, so it's a quick and easy test to see generically how someone's uh, balance is and what their risk for falling is. Um, I think there's been a couple of studies that have come out and looked at it and how it compares to longevity and how it correlates to longevity. Um, it's definitely not the whole picture. You know, if you if you can stand on one foot for an hour, it doesn't mean you're going to live to your own <laughs> or anything. Uh, it would be really nice to have a quick test like that. Um, but what it does generally show is uh, an overall uh, fitness conditioning, just body awareness level that in general correlates to, to better longevity. Um, but it's a quick and easy way for people just to check. Um, and, and what's the idea? You stand on one leg and then the other leg or? Yeah, yeah. You just stand on one leg and the, the goal is to get anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds without having to put your other foot down or topple over. And if you're under that mark, um, then in general, they'll say that you're at a higher risk for falls and, and potential problems. Um, but again, there's a lot of variables to that, but, but that's generically what it is. Talk, Sean, also about your work with athletes. And, and um, I always wonder, like when I see professional athletes get hurt, you know, and, and how come like even hamstrings, you know, that, that hamstrings seems to be one of the big things that, that knock out athletes. Is that yeah, something that they could get better at or be trained differently? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we see a lot of athletes. That, fortunately, we live in a very active area. Um, so we see everything from, you know, kids playing basketball, volleyball, soccer, baseball, any of those things, all the way up to um, like pickleball right now is just mm. exploded in popularity. And um, that comes along with its own list of injuries as well. Um, so we, we deal with athletes in a lot of different ways. One is if they've already been hurt, um, they're always like itching to get back on the court or the field or anything else. So our role is to get them all the way back and safe to go back into their, you know, their, uh, chosen sport. Um, fortunately, we also get to see a number of people that have had issues in the past and they want to take a more preventative or proactive approach to future problems. Um, and so physical therapists are really good at assessing movement and identifying potential weak areas or areas that can be improved. Um, so we do a lot of prevention work with a lot of the athletes in town. And, um, and again, pickleball right now seems to be just the, the sport that's been exploding. So we've done a lot of work with, um, the pickleballers in town recently as well. And there have been injuries from pickleball. Oh, yeah. They, you know, any, any time you play sports, there's there's the potential for injuries. Um, but I had, I had this one patient one time and I had asked her about all her injuries and she goes, well, I'd, I'd rather wear out than rust out. And I always thought that was, that was one of my favorite sayings. All, all of my patients have heard me say that at one time or another. So, you know, a lot, I've heard, had a few people that say, oh, I don't know about pickleball. I'm worried about getting injured. And I always tell them that lady's quote. Is one of my <laughs> How about an athlete? Should he or she see you before they begin competing or before the season, how does that work? Yeah, so um, we do we do a lot of stuff in kind of what is considered off season or preseason. Um, it's generally more preseason when they're in the off season. I think there's a lot of rest and um, recovery, which is very appropriate. And then when they get into preseason, they go, "Oh, oh no, I got <laughs> I forgot about this. I got to work on this." So um, in general, we see them in preseason um, as far as um, the preventative side. Um, but we do see a lot of people in on off season too, people that have kind of patched themselves up to get them through the season and then like, okay, I'll deal with this in the off season. And we see a lot of people for that as well. Um, and again, that generally consists of us um, assessing them, playing their sport or, you know, mimicking those types of activities um, and then creating programs for them to follow or, you know, doing hands-on things to help the body move in the way they need it to. But if I came to the office, I haven't been there lately, I won't see a pickleball court, not yet. Or no, 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 not yet. We're, uh, we need to talk about getting one up on the roof, but um, we, great. we do have the space. What about uh, an athlete, Sean? I always wonder about this. Um, prone to injury that, you know, and I'm talking top, top athletes, you know, get hamstring pulls. Is yeah. there something they should be doing to prevent that or to minimize it from happening? over and over uh, oh yeah for sure um so we help we help a lot of athletes with different programs that they do or off-season strengthening routines that they do um, and we also coordinate a lot with um local athletic trainers and um other coaches and things to 
you know, make sure that certain athletes are getting certain things. And, um, but yeah, uh, definitely a lot of, a lot of, uh, specific work, especially, you know, if you're a sprinting type athlete, the, the hamstrings is a big one. Um, unfortunately, if you do injure it, it, it's a fair amount of time off the field or off the court or whatever. And, um, so it's definitely one that we work a lot with. Um, and it, there's a lot of good evidence out there in the various sport literature on various preventative type activities or exercises or strength routines for them to do. So there really is a lot out there to, to help with that. If you injure your um, hamstring and you recover to get back to where you are, can you get to a point where you'll never have that happen again? Or can you develop that capacity to prevent it from happening? Yeah. So uh, again, unfortunately, when you're, when you're playing any kind of sport or just, you know, moving or living in general, there's, there's no guarantees, but uh, again, you can dramatically reduce your risk of injuries um, with certain exercise routines for something like a hamstring or, um, you know, there's a lot of shoulder injuries, like I said, pickleball and stuff like that, um, that do a very good job. And they, and again, they've shown, they have different um, routines that people will do that have had loads of research done on them and have shown that they can prevent various injuries. Um, there's one called the FIFA 11 and that's specifically designed for soccer players. And that's was designed with the, the goal of reducing ACL injuries. Um, and so they find when athletes do this before a game, uh, and they follow this specific program that the, the risk of injury is dramatically lower by like by over 50%. Um, that doesn't mean it's impossible to tear your ACL if you do this program, but it, I mean, I'd, I'd take a 50% reduction, um, in injury risk for quick little program before, before game. Funny talking to you, I'm thinking about the fact that you read almost all pro, pro teams, colleges now as well have trainers. Do any, um, our physical therapists have a part of that team? I don't know if oh, I've yeah. ever seen that. So, all, all those, all those athletes are worth, uh, tens of millions of dollars and even in college anymore with all the, the TV deals. So um, the healthcare team or the, the fitness team or whatever that are, are at any of these teams anymore is PT, athletic trainers, personal trainers, massage therapists, physicians. I mean, it it's everybody now. There is a, there's a full um, healthcare team for all of these athletes. It, it's really, it's awesome. Um, we've seen a lot of improvement in a lot of areas that, um, just weren't paid attention to in the past. And these, some of these kids just get excellent care. That's what, um, we always loved as physical therapists loved Kobe Bryant, um, because Kobe Bryant was always asked, you know, how long did you, I mean, how are you able to play as long as you did? And he goes, well, you know, obviously I worked really hard, but I also did, I worked with my physical therapist oh, really? every day. <laughs> so, you know, Kobe always used to give us a big a big shout out as a profession and um you know all these athletes get pt and massage and everything every day so um yeah. gotta protect those investments but it's funny i never saw him as a spokesperson for movement for like physical no, therapy he, <laughs> yeah we we tried a few times but uh, didn't work out one of the things i think that makes you unique a little bit different from other um physical therapists in the area is you're also a, a what is a board specialist in orthopedics what does that mean? Um, so physical therapy has uh, subspecialties, just like physicians do. Um, it's not required as a physical therapist. Um, so there's a, only a small percentage of people that do do that. Um, so I have a board specialty in orthopedics. Um, and like I said, Montana, my office has a board specialty in geriatrics. And um, a number of the guys, my some of my business partners as well, all have board specialties, which is really exciting. And, um, uh, most of the therapists in my office have board specialties now, and, uh, it's really exciting. It's a, it's a lot of extra school work. Um, depending on how you go about doing it, it can require, a, uh, more classes, uh, a lot of projects. Um, uh, Isaac, uh, was, is doing, or just completed his residency. Um, and that required, you know, a, a lot of extra hours with me, one-on-one -on -one mentoring time and, stuff like that. So it, it's a deep dive, a very, very important deep dive into the, into a specific field. Um, and what they've shown is that people that have board specialties get people better faster, uh, which was my motivation for doing it in the beginning. Cause I just thought, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay. People are getting better. Um, but I know I could be doing things even better. And, um, 
doing the residency and the board specialty training really, really improved my ability to take care of people. So um, it's a really cool thing. It's a lot of extra work, um, but absolutely worth it in the long run. And talk a little bit about the fact that if somebody wants to find the physical therapist, aside from check out movement for life physical therapy, what should folks look for when they seek out a physical therapist? Um, well, I mean, it really depends on, on what they're looking for. Um, we are very, I guess, fitness forward. Uh, we like being proactive. We strongly encourage exercise. Um, again, all the hands-on stuff feels really good and we do do some of that stuff. Um, but in general, best bang for your buck is going to be very targeted exercises for your, your problem. So we always recommend that people look for physical therapists that are going to, um, are going to encourage them to be active in the clinic and outside of the clinic. Um, cause that's the best bet for the long term. Um, and we also, we, I personally like, um, when the clinic is on the open side, uh, you know, you've seen, you've seen my office. Um, I think that it provides a better environment for healing and for people getting better. And, um, you know, it's nice to see people, um, at all the different stages along, along the path. I, I think it would be very helpful. Um, I, I were, I did a rotation when I was a student in this place that just had rows of closed off rooms. Um, and I'm sure people got better and, uh, you know, I'm sure the, the therapist that I worked with was excellent. Um, but just from the community building standpoint and just encouraging people to be active and, um, and not sedentary, I think that that open concept, um, encourages that more personally what I, I prefer, but. Well, no, I have to say too, and it's a compliment to, to you and your staff that you do definitely feel that when you get there. It's just kind of cool to see different people in different stages. You know, some yeah. people are just recovering. Some people are <laughs> going through a more strenuous recovery, but they all, you know, it was kind of fun seeing other people and you get friendly with them. And, oh, you yeah. know, and also a compliment to your, your staff and we'll give a shout out to one person who I understand is no longer there, but staff was very friendly, you know, everybody there. And then give a shout out. Who am I thinking of? The woman who was at the front just left you after oh, Sherry. How many years? Uh Sherry was there. Oh man, almost from the start. She was she was absolutely wonderful. Can you imagine um, the nerve of her when she retired? I know. I can't I can't believe she left me like that. <laughs> uh, well, she's she was lovely and she's um by all accounts very happy in retirement. So okay, but just a real asset to your uh organization but again everybody there was you know the whoever you come in they all had a big smile they all had a big greeting and it really seemed it was like almost like a very personal touch that everybody kind of yeah. knew everybody pretty well it seemed like yeah and that's the hope right you want the community I mean, physical therapy is not a you know a quick fix right i mean we're trying to get to the root cause which means you'll probably be there more than one time not always but a lot of times and so I, you know, I love the community. We just had, there's this 12 year old kid this morning talking to this 89 year old lady and they were laughing and goofing off while they were sitting there doing their exercises with us. And just thought that was great. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's great. I love and, it. And talking about the community as we close down, let's talk about two other things that you've been involved with, Sean, that we mentioned before you were involved with the Asheville city soccer club. And how'd you mm -hmm. get involved in that? Um, well, I was, really a, a lot of luck honestly we there were two people i was i was still pretty new in the area um and i had two people that had known the owners of the team and were like hey you should talk to sean and you know when the owners heard my name multiple times they're like oh okay we got to talk to sean um and the the one guy ended up somehow connecting you know have seven steps to kevin bacon or whatever um realized that um, he was engaged to one of my brother's <laughs> roommates or some such thing. And uh, I was just a wild, small world thing there. And, you know, to the credit of the actual city guys, they've tried to keep everything local um, from day one. And they, you know, they had a lot of big groups that were coming in and wanting to be there from day one um, that were not local to Asheville and not, um, you know, just big box kind of stuff. And they said, no, 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 we, this is Asheville's team. We want this to be Asheville. We're from Asheville. Um, and so they took a chance on me, um, very new in, you know, I just opened my practice a year and a half before, um, is definitely newer guy in town. Um, 
and it's been great ever since I, you know, we had so much, have had so much fun every year with them. And yeah, I mean, their season starts in just a couple of weeks. Can't wait. We'll be on the sidelines again. It'll be great. Yeah, very cool. And the one thing, Sean, that always impressed me about your practice is you're also involved in other community activities as well. I know you do a couple of major events each year. What are those? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we do talks all over the place. So we, the, you know, the consistent ones, we'll talk at Givens Estates and Deerfield and a lot of the retirement communities in town. Uh, we do talks all over at the Y. Um, so I'll go down to the Reuters Y. Um, Jim over in Candler does a lot of talks out at the Candler Y. I mean, we're all over the place um, doing that. And then each year we have our annual Parkinson's walk run, right. uh, which is one of my favorite things every year. Um, and we raise money for the local community, uh, the local Parkinson's community and the, their support group. And um, so like this year we raised money um, to purchase exercise equipment for them. Um, so I pick things off a list and we would go get it for them, which I thought was a lot of fun. Um, and um, we've had close to 200 people there each time, which has just been wild. Um, a lot of fun. And since you mentioned it, I know you've also done a lot of work with Parkinson's folks as well, including yeah. a good friend of mine. How did you get involved in that whole area? Um, so when uh, my wife and I moved around a lot for grad school and everything else, so we ended up in Tucson for a couple of years. Um, and the person I was coming in to fill in for or replace at, at the beginning when I was there um, saw tons of people with Parkinson's. Um, I was working on my specialty in orthopedics. So it was way out of my comfort zone. Um, so I did a lot of research. I went to tons of classes and lots of continuing education type stuff um, and really found uh, a number of things that I really liked and a number of things I really didn't um, and have created this program that kind of blends a lot of the existing stuff that we, we know works into this uh, program that uses boxing as a framework yeah uh, which is just so much fun uh you know there are specific movements that we know the research has said is better for people with parkinson's so rather than just sitting there and doing those movements um we have them do very similar movements only to hit something which is so much more fun <laughs> for everybody um and uh, it's very unique I, you know one of the problems with parkinson's is not going away um, we don't have anything in this world that makes it go away, unfortunately. So, you know, if you sprain an ankle, you get better in a couple of weeks and you go away. You have neck pain. And we do a few things, you get better and you go away. If you have Parkinson's, you're kind of stuck with us for a while. Um, but fortunately, they've shown high intensity exercise dramatically reduces symptoms related to Parkinson's, which is really exciting. But now how many people just go, you know what? I want to do high intensity exercise every single day. You know, it's hard. So the novelty of the boxing and the ability for us to adjust it to every different person, and it's not just boxing, but, you know, it's a big component of it is, is really a lot of fun. And you want to talk about community building, you know, all these, all these people that have never boxed before, um, getting, throwing on some gloves and going, oh, what are you in here for? You know, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, so it's really created this great community and, um, we just started our climbing club, um, so we've teamed up with Catalyst Sports um, that does something once a month at the Riveter. Um, and so our Parkinson's crew will come down and do mount, I mean, rock climbing uh, once a month, is, which again, is very exciting. It's been a lot of fun. And you said something which I think is really key to this whole discussion. You mentioned at least several times the word fun, you know, and, and oh, isn't yeah. that, but isn't that kind of cool that, you know, to get better, you can have some fun doing it as well. That's, that's really cool. Absolutely. Well, we said, um, you know, the, a doctor once said that, you know, you, you have to, if you're going to lose weight, you've got to eat food that you like. Right. And, you know, which, you know, surprised everyone in the room because we're talking about not eating as much or, you know, modifying what you eat. And he goes, you got to, got to find something that you like. And it's the same thing with exercise. If you get forced into doing something you don't like, you're never going to like it. You're not going to stay consistent with it. And you, there's just no way you're going to follow through. But at the same time, exercise is kind of that magic pill. It's, it's the, it's the miracle drug that everyone's been looking for it can reduce heart rate, blood pressure can reduce your risk of cancer, all forms of cancer, improves your longevity, decreases your risk of falls, decreases symptoms with Parkinson's. It makes you stronger. You live longer. You live more independently. I mean, it's the wonder drug. 
You just got to find a way to do it that you enjoy and enjoy continuously doing. Because unfortunately, it takes that as well. You always have to do it. John, if folks want to get in touch with you or more specifically find out about movement for life physical therapy, what's the best bet? Um, you can call any one of our offices. The easiest bet, all of us are very, very approachable. We're a small group. There's no red tape. Um, all of it, you can email any of us. Um, you can go to our website, movementforlife.com slash N-O-C-A, North, you know, for North Carolina. And uh, so we're all on there. Um, we're very easy to get in touch with. Um, phone call, email, any of that's fine. And I'll ask you to give the phone number is? Oh, so my phone number at the office is 828-484-4200. Okay. Like, thank you for being my guest on this um, episode of the um, Blaine's World podcast. Sean Simmons with Movement for Life Physical Therapy. Also thank my producer, Kathy Cassetti. We hope to see you maybe even in person sometime, Sean. You be well. That's great. Thanks.